during your lifetime, you have practiced meditation and mindfulness, now is the time to apply that awareness. Remain centered in the experience of the present moment, and your passage through the bardo will be made with clarity and peace. The actual purpose of meditation and mindfulness, the ultimate purpose, why you strive through the practice, what is it that you are wanting from the practice? It cannot be just a little bit of relaxation, a little bit of peace of mind, or wanting some worldly things, healing your body a little bit, healing your mind a little bit. These are all byproducts of meditation. But what is the ultimate objective, the ultimate purpose? It is to help you understand death and deal with death as it is happening. Only meditation, only the awareness built through a meditative practice, through the practice of mindfulness, through the art of learning to be in the present moment can help you deal with death. All of the things we do in life, no matter who we are, no matter what we have done, no matter how we have, loved, how we have lived, nothing matters. You cannot cheat death. You cannot trick death. You cannot manipulate your way around death. All the lessons learned during a life, if you leave meditation and mindfulness aside, are lessons of manipulation. It is learning how to use your mind cleverly, how to apply thought, how to perform an action, how to remember what to do, what not to do. None of this is useful when you are facing the ultimate when you are facing truth. Death is that truth. Whether you want it or not, you have to face it. Why is it even a reality? Why can't you skip death with all our intelligence? with our ability to endlessly think and imagine things, why aren't we able to cheat death? It's because we live in the world of lies. Death is the realm of truth. We simply don't have the necessary organs, moving parts to use in the realm of death. In fact, it is not even death. It appears like death from this side. It's because we are clinging to life. We are clinging to form. We are clinging to thoughts and actions. We simply don't know that realm and we call it death. In a way, when we are talking about death, we are not talking about death at all. We're just talking about life. We're talking about life as we do not understand it. All our discussions about death is simply the edge of what we know about life. We cannot talk about death 
because we know nothing about it. Here, Padmasambhava says, if during your lifetime you have practiced meditation and mindfulness, now is the time to apply that awareness. If you have not practiced meditation and mindfulness throughout your life, you cannot deal with death. It's a very direct statement. Your preparation should have begun long before. Your life itself should be a preparation for this moment. How you deal with this moment, what you do here, is everything. Your entire life is defined by this moment. How you deal with death is who you are. Because what you have done up until now is a small transitory part of life. An ever-changing, momentary, fleeting experience. Always a momentary experience, an impermanent experience, a transient experience will be judged against the backdrop of something real, something permanent, something that is not moving, not changing. Death is that backdrop. It is the ultimate screen against which everything is measured. It is the only contrast. Without death, life is just a meaningless, endless movement of hectic activities. One after another, one after another. One cannot even imagine what a hellish experience life would be if not for the mercy of death. As much as death is criticized, condemned, feared, if we truly understand what death is, it is the invisible hand of life, the compassionate hand of life the loving hand of life. Why? Because it wants to put an end to your suffering. It wants to put an end to unconsciousness. It wants to show you the light. It wants to take away all your accumulated, conditioned burden of experiences and leave you pure and empty. How can it not be the most compassionate act of life, act of existence? Intelligence of life, wisdom of life is revealed in death. This is where we have totally misunderstood the relationship between life and death. Because we cling to life, we see death as the enemy. If we truly understand the role of death, the roles gets reversed. It is not life that is your friend, it is death that is your friend. Again, a small distinction has to be made between death and dying. Dying is an unglamorous, torturous, painful experience for the mind that is not familiar with meditation and mindfulness, which is the normal mind, the regular mind. There's nothing beautiful about dying, but death itself is a glorious experience. It is an opportunity for you to slip into 
the realm of truth. Here he says, if you have practiced mindfulness and meditation, this is the time to use it. The reason why you practice meditation and mindfulness is to use it here now. And how do you use it? It is not a tool. It is not something that you can pick out of your pocket like a knife and say, all right, now I'm going to use it. Either meditativeness has seeped in and has become a part of your being or you are a total stranger to it. Meditativeness should have become your way of life. Your mind should have already become familiar with a routine of doing nothing. Only this routine of doing nothing carries forward. If you have taken this practice to its ultimate, if you have learned the art of doing nothing, If you can apply that at the moment of death, death becomes your permanent state. It becomes your reality. It puts an end to all mentation. It puts an end to all thinking. It puts, puts an end to all activities. But it does not put an end to you. Death is not the end of consciousness. It is the end of thinking. Death is not end of aliveness. It is the end of wandering. Death is not the end of you. It is the end of all the ideas of you. If you can be in the here and now and exercise your choice to be, then death becomes a great liberator. 